thank you very much, uh, dear colleagues, dear organizers. Thank you very much for this invitation. Uh, it's the second time I'm speaking here, and it's always a big pleasure and very inspiring to be in this environment. Uh, I would like to talk about the usage of artificial intelligence tools to pre-bank and debunk misinformation in social media. And uh, uh, we, and with us, I mean our group, Cooperation and Transformative Governance, we are from the social science. So we work a lot with the people, perceptions, opinions, views, including such disciplines as behavioral economics, psychology, sociology, and other social sciences, policy studies. This is our group. And uh, our major focus is interdisciplinary approach on governance and decision-making processes in so-called VUCA conditions. VUCA stands for vulnerability, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity, including the systems thinking. So we are trying, if we speak about risk governance, risk assessment, if we take digital solution tool, we try to develop the tool, but we also try to understand how this tool will be implemented, how it will be perceived, and what will be the possible benefits, but also the risk from such tools. So what we are developing in our group, it's a cooperation models uh, to see how the cooperation and discussion process is going. Um, we develop decision support systems uh, and participatory modeling planning. Uh, we have these three big kinds of methods uh, which help us to structure the problem. So we apply different methods such as games, for example, uh, on the topics of public goods and common pool management. And uh, uh, in our work, we assume that an internet and social media is a common good as well as uh, artificial intelligent tools to deal in internet. Uh, we include bounded rationalities, social heterogeneity, meaning that there is no one common opinion, but we are all different. And uh, if you speak about policy on digitalization, for example, there are different perceptions of risks and benefits. And uh, the issue is how it would, would we develop a compromise solution? We speak about formation of strategic goals uh, and selection of the most important drivers. And finally, in our participatory modeling, we use multi-criteria optimization and prioritization, which is also based to a large extent on decision-making experiments, on games, we use systems mapping and morphological analysis and participatory scenario planning. This is just some of the methods which we are applying. And uh, digital uh, policy, the digitalization, uh, cyber and internet effects are among our major focus of research. So now I am moving directly to the introduction to this topic. So why do we speak actually about misinformation in social media? Why it is important? Actually, misinformation existed for centuries, but now internet and technologies and also the tools are facilitated spread and make it almost universal. And we speak also about situations of high uncertainty connected with safety threat, and uh, this also creates a good ground for various misinformation, uh, conspiracies, uh, fake news, rumors. And here I also would like to highlight that we are dealing with the area of misinformation, meaning that false, wrong information is being spread involuntarily, coming out of risk perception. So we don't deal with disinformation when uh, uh, some false information is being located by purpose to create harm uh, somewhere. Uh, so if you speak about climate change and social media, uh, now we see significant spread of misinformation, uh, also a new wave which is being connected to several uh, issues, but a lot of conspiracies started already during the COVID time and explanation of the COVID and they are continuing to grow. And what we observe in our work, so if someone tends to one kind of conspiracy, very probably he would be tending to another kind of conspiracy. We are conducting research on social platforms like Twitter to the extent as long as it was possible. Uh, and uh, so for us, it is crucial to understand how information there is shaping and reflecting public discourse. So in our study, we analyzed several thousands of tweets and uh, we have tools which allow to follow the discussions in social media 
and uh, we are also developing artificial intelligence tools to deal with this misinformation. So to help uh, people to provide them with the tools which would show the misinforming content or highlight the misinforming content. Content, for example, with a number of UK institutions, we developed a tool which is called Misinform Me, and uh, this is an app uh, which everybody can download on the laptop and uh, this app would be showing so if information is coming from the source which was ranked already by fact checkers as uh, not credible to a certain extent it would send a warning to people so that listen this information comes already from not credible source and while we are doing this we tried all possible kinds of appearance of this tool but what we observe, if you blur it or you close the information, it makes the contrary more interesting. So it raises interest to go and to see to this uh, uh, to this news item and to tweet it further. So our in intent by using these artificial intelligence tools is to break this instant reaction, which makes the spread of misinformation viral. So that the person when he gets such kind of content, that maybe with seconds. Um, in taking the decision, listen, wait, uh, search for alternative source, this already you know, to stop the spreading of significant amount of misinformation. So uh, what we did, this is a part of research which uh, we did on Twitter during the last times, where we tried to understand climate change uh, and discussions which are going on climate change. So especially on oceans, forests, soil, megafauna and sea insects, and uh, we mapped all these areas. And we also see uh, the growing consensus on climate change as an external threat require, requiring immediate actions. Uh, but what actually happens now through the spread of misinformation to the social media, especially during the disaster, it's also a very interesting topic of research. What we observe is that, for example, earthquakes are connected with a certain level of misinformation. When people are searching for official reliable sources, and in, instead, in the past, we observed the situations when, for example, panic in Albania, in the capital of Albania, in Tirana, was caused by information in social media that there is a high prob probability of an earthquake and people starting to leave the city, but this was actually not, not true. So, uh, and uh, there are several organizations like EMCS in France, which are working in this area, uh, trying to pre-bank and debunk this misinformation and uh, to send people the right uh, and correct information. So if we see uh, there is also a certain uh, complexity and variety of available IE tools, so there are many alternatives for users to, to use these tools, uh, which include Botomato, Misinformi, so a lot of tools were already developed, but uh, the willingness to use them is still quite low. And uh, this was the question which we addressed by the start of our research, what is actually keeping uh, people away from usage of these tools? But first, we did uh, uh, a meta review on all studies published by Scopus on the usage of IE tools to deal with misinformation. So um, we clustered the studies, uh, we identified selected keywords, and uh, what we find out is that currently the majority of the tools and on the studies uh, which look at how people are using these IE tools to deal with misinformation uh, on classification. And uh, a lot of them are connected to COVID. So uh, all other kinds of tools, like analyzing the impact of the risk or the content of the case or combating misinformation, uh, they are quite minor. And only 11% of all these publications are in social science papers. So we see a huge need for further research here and only 5% are on decision making in decision science. So a uh, minor portion of the papers are dedicated to other topics uh, which go beyond COVID-19 risk, but most of them uh, will probably launch at the time and they focus also on this topic. So the majority are dealing with the topics on how we detect misinformation, 
uh, is the decision to filter the news left to the convenience of individual users. Are the individual users uh, considered as active actors in attempt to combat misinformation? Do researchers and professionals have the same vision? Uh, however, and uh, here we looked also at the source of these studies and um, at the source of financing, which was supporting these studies, and we could see three big bubbles. So currently the entire research is being focused on uh, three uh, countries, which is US, uh, the biggest uh, funder of uh, this kind of research, followed by UK and by China. So interests in other regions, we found a couple of papers in countries like Saudi Arabia, uh, but mainly so this is currently driven by these three countries. So another methodology which uh, we use here trying to understand the usability of artificial intelligence tools uh, is uh, heuristic modeling, uh, which are methods from behavioral economics where we identify drivers of users, so what would be driving them to uh, use these methods? So are people willing to use social networks during natural human disasters? If we take, for example, this topic as climate change adaptation is our focus, what factors influence this intention? Do these factors relate to infrastructural characteristics of social networks or to the subjective characteristics of the users? Because, of course, if we take various groups, and we have here also research on uh, journalists, fact checkers, policy makers, lay people, citizens, <clears throat> what are their expectations on these tools? And clearly, it's not possible to develop the tools which would fit everything, so we would need to prioritize. So what are the major factors which are important for them? For them? Which factors influence their willingness to use these fact checking tools? And uh, here we see that a lot depends on the intention, on the easiness to use, so how easy it is to use uh, the tool on perception, on uh, the usefulness. And uh, here still a lot of work is required because um, these tools are still perceived as something complicated or what we are frequently hear from uh, uh, people who are, who are cooperating with us in decision-making experiments that it's also scaring that some kind of the app sits on the laptop and, and starts and to rate the news, starts to comment in, uh, in the social network. So all these uh, perceptions have to be addressed and deal with if we would like that uh, the usage of IE tools in this area would be spread stronger. Another part of our research is on conspiracy theories, so-called conspiracy theories, where we analyze uh, tweets, so we try to grasp, we take a certain period and we try to grasp all tweets which are being communicated in social media, and uh, here we identified various kinds of conspiracies, and I would say that we have a group of PhD students who are working here, dealing, sorting uh, the keywords, and they have a lot of fun, and um, uh, we are also learning so much on this, so how people explain <coughs> certain risks with certain areas, so for example, on COVID-19, we have a 5G uh, conspiracy, which means that COVID-19 was caused by the deployment of 5G, or Bill Gates, or Bill Pharma, and we have an opportunity to follow all these discourses on social media, for example, combining them with implementation of risk mitigation measures. This is also very interesting because it shows a big um, volatility, and I will show it further. Uh, what we are working also currently at, it's also earthquakes, and they are explaining, explained by various risks. Uh, yeah, starting from the military explanation, car, theological, everything possible. Mm -hmm. So we also try to understand these discourses and we are now extending the tool because our first prototype was uh, focused on English speaking media. So now we extended it to all countries in the EU. And our next step will be to include uh, Japanese uh, and uh, also to go to the Far East region to be able to understand the discourse there. So this is just one of the results uh, of such analysis. And here, so for this one, uh, 1.7 million of tweets were screened during the COVID time. And we could see that, for example, such conspiracies as 5Gs peaked at the beginning 
but then disappeared and other conspiracies we have just like a row here. Yeah, and just a couple of papers published here. So, and yeah, I see that my time is up. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. We're going to hold questions till lunch because it's not very far away. But uh, thank you very much. It's really fascinating.